So here's what you will need for the new cyanotype formula. Um, first you'll need a hot plate of some kind and a pan. This is just to fill with water and act as a kind of like a double boiler. You'll need a thermometer, either the either this style or the digital ones is fine. Um, distilled water, potassium ferrocyanide, ammonia, I, ferric ammonia oxalate, um, scale, uh, those disposable cups that uh, help you measure stuff out, uh, a dark bottle to put it in, a uh, another bottle with filter. This is what's it's going to. We're going to crystallize it in this overnight and then filter it out. And because this is a little bit more toxic than the original formula, always make sure you have eye goggles, rubber gloves of some kind on. All right, so let's get into it. Okay, so we have 20 milliliters of distilled water in this one and 30 milliliters of distilled water in this one. I have 30 grams of the ferric oxalate and 10 grams of the potassium ferrocyanide. Now we have to take these over to the water bath and heat them up. Okay, we just reached 160 on the water bath, so I'm going to stir in the fair cyanide into the t into the 20 milliliters of water okay You just keep stirring this one up until it's all good and dissolved in there. Then uh, after it's dissolved, we leave it in the water bath. We want to keep this at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And then um, we will add the other beaker in and get it up to temperature. Now we want to get the second one to 120 degrees, which it just hit. And then we're going to add the ferric oxalate to go get a sorry about that had to go get a stirring rod I don't want to leave it in this solution because it's too hot for it so I'm gonna stir this Dissolve it all in there. Then as soon as I get this dissolved in, I will pour it into the ferrocyanide solution. Okay, here's the final step. This solution is still 160 degrees, and this solution is 120 degrees. And I'm going to mix them together. And stir them up really good. Now the final step is we're going to let this sit overnight and let the crystals uh, form in it and filter them out. Okay, so it is set overnight and now we're going to run this through this filter paper. There should be crystals in here and then we may weigh them just to see if it's. it says it's supposed to be about 15 grams. So I'm just running this through a couple coffee filters just to make sure we get everything. And you can see in the bottom the crystals. So this will filter through and then we will top it off to 100 milliliters of total solution.
and um, that should be it. So I'll let this filter through, and then while that's filtering, I'm going to get these crystals out so we can weigh them. Okay, all the solution is filtered through, so I'm going to remove the um, coffee filter. And then this is going to be topped off to 100 milliliters, and then kind of stirred up, and that will complete the solution. You don't have to add much water. Okay. By the way, you should try to do all of this in red light. I forgot, so I'm going to hopefully haven't messed up the um, project. The red light, or safe light I'm using, is just a deep red LED grow light. And that's, that's all you need, and it'll work just fine. So we're going to put this in the bottle. And then that will be ready. We'll, I'll have to test this later, make sure it actually works and doesn't fog or anything. So that is... The solution now I wasn't able to get the crystals out because they are formed solid in the bottom so here's what we're going to do to weigh this we're going to take an empty cylinder here so we'll zero out and then we'll see approximately how much See, this is saying 30 grams. Should only be about 15. So I'll have to test this solution and see how it does. Okay, so just to make sure that it does work right, all we got to do is get a little bit of the solution out into a cup or something. Not a, don't need a whole lot. We're just making a little test page. So there's a couple things. One, we're making sure that it works at all. But two, um, from what the instructions say online, if something is wrong with the solution, it'll make these little weird fern-like crystal patterns all over the paper. So that's one way you can know that something didn't go right with making the formula. Now, I'm not sure about why it showed 30 grams instead of about 15 of the ferric oxalate but or what the crystals that were left over but we'll just have to um, make a test print and see that could simply be because of um, trying to weigh it in the glass because I couldn't get it out so we will um, like I said put it on there which I put way too much um, just coat a piece of paper, let it dry, and then, uh, and then we will see what it does. It should be a lot faster, so when you're doing, when you're doing your exposure with the new SlamTap formula, instead of like 15 minutes, it should be only three or four, so keep that into account. So we'll let this dry, and then we'll see what happens. Okay, I let the paper dry um, and exposed it for one minute and 30 seconds. And now we'll see what we get. So apparently it did work, otherwise it wouldn't have done this. Um, it is faster. It honestly looks like um, it looks similar to if I would have developed standard formula in um, vinegar as far as the tonal range. So that's the new cyanotype formula and in the next videos we're going to be testing some very unique ideas, some two-step formulas. So there's a sensitizer and then an actual developer like you would with uh, palladium or calotype or whatever.
So there you go, there's the new cyanotype formula and as you see it seems to work okay.